fourth and fifth graders. Happy Wednesday. I'm so excited to get to teach another math lesson to you guys today. So today we're going to be looking at multiplying decimals by 10 to the second power or 10 to the third power. Now we have already learned about these exponents right here. Remember that's what those are called and what that actually means. Now don't forget this 10 to the second power does not mean 10 times 2, okay? It does not mean 10 times 2, so be very careful of that. Remember what it actually means. If I were to rewrite this, it would simply be 10 times 10. Here, this is not 10 times 3, okay? When you have a number to a power, it's basically saying you have this base number three times. So if I were to rewrite this, it would be 10 times 10 times 10, okay? And then we would know that 10 times 10 would become 100, and then our 10 times 10 times 10 would become 1,000. Okay, so keep this in mind as we're jumping into our math lesson today. Don't get tricked. You are not multiplying these two numbers. That's not what it's saying. If it wanted you to do that, you would see parentheses somewhere, okay? All right, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and look at a problem where we're multiplying decimals by 10 to the second power or 10 to the third power. So let's write um, 0 0.125 times 10 to the second power. Now I wanna remind you that to evaluate this expression, you first need to rewrite 10 to the second power as 10 times 10 before you forget, before you do anything else, okay? Now, what I can do is I can come down here and I can say, all right, well, both of these together now, because I've stretched this out, I'm gonna have 0 0.125 times 10 times 10. Now, we know from PEMDAS, from order of operations, that whenever something is in a parentheses, we've got to do it first, okay? Let me rewrite it up here. All right, P is parentheses, so we've got to make sure to do our parentheses first. All right, guys, so what is 10 times 10? Good job, that's 100. So I am going to rewrite that first, and then I'm gonna bring my decimal down here. And so ultimately, I am just going to be multiplying these two numbers. Now we know from yesterday that when I multiply, put our cheat sheet back up, I move my decimal to the right, and when I divide, I move my decimal to the left. I'm multiplying right now. So I'm gonna take a look at my 100. How many zeros do I have in my 100? I have two. So that means that I'm gonna put my marker on my decimal place and I am going to move it over to the right two times, okay? All right. One, two, and then my new decimal point goes right there because I moved it two times. Now, in order to get my answer, <clears throat> I would then write this zero, one, two, point five. Now, remember what I talked to you about yesterday. When you have a zero in the front of your whole number, or when you have a zero in your hundredths place or your thousandths place, those are really just acting as placeholders. Only if it's in the middle of these numbers do you need to keep it, okay? 
So this is outside. This is called something called an outlier. It's outside of our problem. So we can go ahead and we'll just erase this because we don't even really need it. So this would be the answer to this equation, okay? The biggest thing that I want you guys to take away today is just remember to break this down first, multiply this, figure out what 10 to the second is or figure out what 10 to the third is, and then multiply it by your decimal, okay? And remember, you don't even have to rewrite it, guys. I want you to use this trick with the zeros, okay? So remember, take a look. How many zeros do you have first? Then come over here, and then according to how many zeros you have, you're gonna move your decimal place over that many times to the right if you are multiplying. If you're dividing, it's the same thing, it's just to the left, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, I'm gonna keep our little cheat sheet up here for us. And this is something, guys, by the end of this week, we really need to memorize, okay? Um, we need to make sure that we understand this little trick and this little rule because it's gonna be a lifesaver when we're multiplying by 10, hundreds, or thousands with decimals, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and open up our textbook to page 49, okay, make sure you're in 5B in your textbook, the hard one. And we're gonna look down at number 23 where it says to multiply, all right? So pause the video and get, get to that page. Okay, guys, so we're on 23. So on our whiteboards, on our piece of paper, remember um, you can upload this work that you're doing to Seesaw. Um, I'd love to see your work as you're going along this week and for the next however long, okay? So, 0 0.6 times 10 to the second power. All right, so remember what you need to do first. You are going to stretch this guy out and you're going to remember that this is really just... 10 times 10, okay? And we know that 10 times 10 is 100. So 0 0.6 times 100. Now, it might be helpful before you move decimals, before you change anything, to write your original decimal kind of big to the side and that can help you move it. Now, remember our trick? go up to my 100, how many zeros do I have? One, two, so I am gonna be moving my decimal to the right because I'm multiplying two times. So watch this, what, watch what I do, okay? This is a little tricky, so stick with me. One, two, and I'm gonna put my new decimal right here. I'm gonna erase this one. Now, do you see how there's not really a number here in this little jump? What I will then do is I will put a zero as a placeholder when I jump and there's no number there, okay? Now, when I rewrite my answer, it would be, you could write zero, six, zero decimal, but we really would maybe want to put, oh, you can't see, but you really would want to put a zero at the end of this, okay, to show that that's a whole number, that there's no tenths, there's no hundreds, thousands, etc. It's just a whole number. You've got a number in your ones and your tens. Now, <clears throat> remember over here, it's on to the side, right here, so you don't really need this. And to be honest with you guys, this just shows 60 as a whole number, you actually really don't even need this because there's nothing within your decimal. There's nothing that's less than a whole. So I can erase this decimal and my answer would just be 60. Now you could rewrite it like this. That's the same thing, okay? Honestly, you could keep it like this and it would be the same thing. It just doesn't look as clean. So I encourage you to at least erase that zero, okay? All right, what I'd like for you to do, my friends, is I'd like for you to go ahead and try 24, <clears throat> excuse me, on your whiteboards um, or on your um, piece of paper 
Try 24, pause the video, and then we'll talk about it in a second. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at 24, see if we got it right. And guys, you know what? If you didn't get it right, is that okay? Yeah, it's absolutely okay. This is our first day working with powers of the second and the third. So 3.09 times 10 squared, 10 to the second power. First thing I need to do is I need to break this up a little bit. I love all these whiteboard markers, you guys. All these colors are making my heart happy. All right, I'm gonna break this up. This is really just showing 10 times 10, okay? Now I'm gonna rewrite it again. I know that 10 times 10 is 100. All right, now it's time for my trick. Remember, this is what we did yesterday. All right, how many zeros do I have? Good job, I have two. One, two. So I am going to move over here and I'm gonna rewrite it just to make it a little easier so it's not all mushed up here. And I'm gonna move my decimal to the right two times because I'm multiplying and I have two zeros. You ready? Count with me. One, two. There's my decimal. All right, so I'm gonna erase the old one. He's done. I'm gonna erase my hops, keep my new decimal there, okay? So my number would become 309. You could put a zero in your tenths place, that's fine. Or you could erase your zero in your decimal because it just shows a whole number. You've got a number in your ones, tens, and hundreds, okay? So you should have gotten 309 for uh, number 24, okay? All right. <clears throat> go ahead and pause the video. Um, I want you to give number 25 a try. Now, I know that it's 10 to the third power, but guys, you're going to do the same thing that you've been doing, all right? But instead of doing 10 times 10, you'll just do 10 times 10 times 10, which we already know is a thousand. Okay. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and, uh, and give that one a try. So try number 25, pause the video. All right. For number 25, we had 5.3 times 10 to the third power, right? We're going to go ahead and break this up into 10 times 10 times 10. I'm going to put my 5.3 here. I know that 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So I'm just going to rewrite it to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, now I'm ready for my trick. How many zeros do I have in this number now? Oh, good job. I don't just have two anymore. I have three. One, two, three. So that shows me that I'm going to have to move this decimal to the right three times because I have three zeros. So let's rewrite it down here so it's a little bit easier. Now remember, this is the part where you're gonna have to move over and you're gonna have to put in your zeros, okay? Because there's no numbers here. All right, so markers on your decimal. Here we go, three times. One, two, three. All right, I'm gonna put my new decimal right there. Now, I'm gonna take my zeros as my placeholders and I'm gonna put them inside of my little humps here, okay? Erase my old one, erase my humps, because I've filled in my zeros. I would not erase your humps until you've already put in your zeros, otherwise it's gonna get confusing. Keep my decimal there, and I could put a zero here at the end if I wanted to, just as another placeholder to show there's nothing that's less than a whole. But in reality, my answer would just be 5,000. 300. Okay, so that would be your answer for that one. All right, go ahead and pause the video and I want you to try number 26. All right, for number 26, we have 0 0.421 times 10 to the third power. So first things first, we're going to expand this to make it a little bit easier to think about. 
and I'm gonna add my decimal out front. Okay, I know that this is the same thing as 1000. I'm gonna rewrite it to make it look a little bit better. Now I'm ready for my trick. How many zeros do I have? One, two, three. So on my decimal, I'm gonna move it three times to the right because I'm multiplying. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, I don't have to put any zeros in this one because there are numbers in each of the humps. Now, if I wanted to, because I know a decimal comes at the end of every whole number, I could put a zero here in my tenths place just to show that there's nothing less than a whole over here in your tenths, hundredths, thousands, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. Boop, 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 keep my decimal. I could keep that zero there if I wanted to, but there's really not a need for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase. And if you just put 421, you are also right because you know you can just erase this. Remember I told you if you have zeros here, they're not really necessary, you can erase them, okay? And you can erase your decimal at that point. So you have a whole number of 421 for number 26. Okay guys, um, let's go ahead and break out. I would like for you to, you do not have any workbook pages today. I'd like for you to go ahead and log into Seesaw and you're gonna see an assignment of multiplying decimals by powers of 10 to the second and 10 to the third. I'd like for you to do those on Seesaw and upload those, and I will see you tomorrow for some more math. Um, we're gonna be multiplying decimals by hundreds and thousands tomorrow, okay? All right, guys, love you. Talk soon.